right, I would like to discuss something about freedom based on teachings of the Buddha. Huh? Uh, without being biased to the, uh, towards Buddhism, I should say uh, the truth. Buddhism is the teaching, Dhamma or in a way can say religion, which gives the highest freedom to mankind. Huh? Uh, it is not that I want to be biased towards Buddhism. That's the reality. That is the truth. Um, if you gain freedom from freedom with the help of uh, external power or external personality, uh, that freedom is not the ultimate freedom because your freedom linked to uh, external power or external person. Um, so all, all other religions almost all other religions have taught us that type of freedom. Uh, in order to gain freedom, one has to depend on, sometimes depend on a supernatural power, supernatural being, um, or unknown power, those things. Uh, but Buddhism is a very different religion, very different teaching. Uh, Buddha has always said he is just a teacher. Huh? He does not control us. Uh, he has given the teaching, if not he has shown the path for us to achieve ultimate freedom. When we talk about freedom, there are many levels of freedom, many kind of freedom. Therefore, uh, when I talk about freedom through Buddhism, uh, I must say ultimate freedom. Um, ultimate freedom is actually very strange. When we look at it based on teachings of the Buddha, it is very strange. Ultimate freedom is not freedom from uh, emperor, empire, or ruler, or powerful person. No. Uh, that kind of freedom is very limited. A country can be under uh, empire. When they get Away from empire, we say that is freedom. Huh? We all know uh, m we were under British Empire. British ruled many Asian countries, African countries. So we got freedom, independence. We use another word, independence. Uh, that type of freedom is... Uh, very well known to us, uh, but that is not ultimate freedom. We are free from British Empire, but we ourselves are not free from many things. Uh, we haven't got uh, freedom from many things. Uh, we have enormous amount of challenges, problems in our, our life and they are taking a different shape also. Huh? Uh, so uh, we had to struggle with world conditions, conditions of the society, changes of the society, uh, 
changes of people, uh, when we live with different kind of people, uh, also we should be able to deal with them. Uh, then uh, sometimes directly we are not responsible when the economy of a country is changing or development of neighbor countries economy threatened to us, we face that also. So, uh, although we got independence or freedom from an empire, we are not free from so many things. Uh, so, we cannot call uh, that kind of freedom is ultimate freedom. Uh, ultimate freedom is taught in Buddhism, is very different. Ultimate freedom should be achieved freedom from oneself. So that's very strange in a way. When we see it in that way, it is very strange. Uh, we can achieve freedom from many, many things, but the last freedom to be achieved is freedom from self. We are not free from self. That means our attachment to self, uh, belief in self. Uh, so we are still uh, attachment to self. So Buddhism is the teaching, uh, or Buddha Dhamma is the teaching which help us to be free from self. We call it attaining Nibbana, uh, we call it attaining ultimate liberation. Then uh, well-known and common word is Nibbana, ultimate freedom. What is uh, freedom from self? Uh, freedom from self is a freedom from our misconcept, wrong belief. Uh, uh, we are very strongly attached to this concept, uh, this belief. Uh, whatever the things we think of or whatever the things we do, always with this concept. Huh? I do this, I do that, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do this, uh, I want to get rid of this thing and that thing, I want to get rid of uh, certain situations. Like this, we always think when we live our life, we always think like that. And I want to gain this and that. The unfortunate thing is, I don't say this is wrong, but unfortunate thing is, um, there is no such a self, huh? Uh, although we attach and do everything because of sto strong attachment to self, there is no self. Huh? Um, why we can say no self? That is the teaching of the Buddha. Uh, if there is a self within us, or if we can say, I is myself, you is yourself, they means themselves. Uh, we can look at it in this way. Uh, there is nothing I can um, control. There is nothing I can uh, uh, say I am independent. Uh, 
whatever I think, whatever I do, uh, I uh, can't say I am independent. Uh, if we think of our uh, uh, things which are belong to, uh, when we say self, self is very big. Uh, uh, our belongings, uh, properties, uh, and our relatives, family members, uh, friends, everything is part of self. But uh, nothing I ca we can call we can call about nothing uh, belong to ourselves so we have control over them huh? uh, we have we have many friends we had many good friends today some of the friends are no more with us but we never wanted our good friends good relatives closer ones beloved ones to uh, leave us but many have left so if they are part of self we must have the control towards that but we don't have so when we have things which are belong to us also the same we can say this is belong to me that is belong to me I want them to be with me all the time. Sometimes we can say they are belong to us and they are be with us, but we may have to leave them temporarily or permanently. We have to leave everything which are belong to us. Huh? We have no way to carry. If they are belong to us, if they are part of self, uh, we should be able to be with them according to our wish all the time. But it is not possible. Many, many people who had so many things and thought they are belong to them, they are part of them, part of self, have left them uh, totally. So, when we see about our life, uh, also the same. Huh? We, although we want to live uh, our life in a way, can say permanently. Even if we don't wish, let us say we don't wish to live permanently because we know very well we cannot live permanently. But at least with good health, with happiness, uh, good health and happiness. These two are so important to us. Uh, uh, with freedom, happiness, freedom, good health, uh, in a way, maybe long life. Uh, there is no guarantee. No one can give a guarantee about our good health. No one can give a guarantee about our freedom. Uh, no one can give guarantee about our long life. Huh? Some people lead a very long life. Then they think they don't want to live long. Even that, they have to live long. So, long life also not within our control. Good health also not within our control. Happiness is also not control. Happiness is the most fragile experience we used to experience in our life. In one moment we can be very happy. In another moment our happiness can drop to zero. Huh? We may feel very miserable huh, under certain situations. So uh, what is so great about self? What is so great about attachment to self? Huh? What is so great about uh, 
doing everything to make self happy, uh, self comfortable. Uh, even that, there is no self because if there is a self, uh, whatever we think as part of self, our properties, our life, our good health, happiness, freedom, calmness, everything, we should be able to control, we should be able to maintain, but uh, we have no control over them. Uh, so, the Buddha said, uh, if we cannot control anything according to the way we want and the time we want to control, we are unable to do. Therefore, we should not attach to self. We should not uh, pay too much attention to a permanent self because there is no permanent self. If there is a permanent self, all those things I mentioned, happiness, good health, freedom, all are part of self. But we have no control over them. Uh, therefore, all those things, including our life, we cannot take as self. This is our intellectual understanding. Intellectually, we know it. Intellectually, we talk about this all the time. But it is not a reality. It is not a truth. Uh, by understanding this truth, realization, by realizing this truth, one has to come to a conclusion. There is no self. We live. The self which we are attached to is not a permanent self. So Buddha is the only person uh, preach the Dhamma in order to come to that realization. But it is something extremely difficult. That is why we all have to struggle. This freedom is taught only in teachings of the Buddha. Uh, but it is not something impossible huh? because the Buddha himself achieved that uh, realization and he taught. That is the ultimate freedom. Um, so, that is the freedom taught in Buddhism and uh, no other religions teach us about that. They taught many things for people to be happy, lead a moral life. All the religions teach us some moral teaching, something to be happy, so it is common, teaching for the happiness, teaching for the free uh, uh, calmness for people taught by almost every religion, but ultimate freedom is taught only in teachings of the Buddha. Uh, I mentioned about that, but my main intention today is to talk about something else in the name of freedom. General freedom, huh? not that ultimate freedom. Generally in our life, we must have some freedom. Huh? Uh, that is a human right. Living with freedom is a human right. But in some countries or some situations, people do not have that human right also, live with freedom. Until today, although we call world is very advanced, talk so much about democracy, uh, there are some people live like um, uh, slaves also. Huh? Uh, they don't have common freedom, general freedom also. So that is quite unfortunate. Then there are 
certain kind of people, they are in another extreme, they misuse the freedom and they expect something which is not practical as the freedom. Freedom is very important. Huh? Uh, even if we forget about ultimate, ultimate freedom or liberation, in our ordinary life, freedom is very important. But there are some people uh, expect something in the name of freedom which is not uh, which is not good or which is not right. Uh, in the name of freedom, some people think, actually today many people think, they can do whatever they like, that is freedom. Uh, they can think whatever they like, they can do whatever they like, they can talk whatever they like. Uh, uh, to them that is the freedom. Uh, no, no one has the right to control us. We are totally free to do whatever we like. Uh, in a way, I can say that's what happening today. Huh? Uh, when we think of changes of our society, changes of societies of certain countries, we can see people misuse freedom because they think wrongly about freedom. About the about general freedom, freedom. Uh, when we live in a society, our general freedom freedom is very important. Buddha has given some guidelines for our general freedom. According to the Buddha, it is not possible for us to do whatever we want to do, whatever we like. Uh, every time, in every situation. When we want to do something, when we want to talk about something, we have to have some uh, principles. We must follow some principles. The Buddha has given three principles, three principles to guide us when we uh, want to practice freedom, when we, when we want to achieve freedom, when we want to achieve happiness. Uh, first principle given by the Buddha is, uh, I will use the Pali term, Attadi Pataiya. Atta means oneself. Uh, adipati, adipati, atta adipati, two words, atta, oneself, adipati. Adipati means chief or um, ruler, controller. Uh, there are quite a number of meanings. Atta adipati means when we want to do something, we must pay attention towards that aspect. Uh, our own uh, our own uh, understanding we must pay some attention towards our own understanding our own own understanding about what is good what is right what is beneficial for ourselves and others thinking of uh, our actions based on what we have learned, uh, what we have seen, and uh, we must think of doing something. When we want to do something, uh, must think, is that good for me to do? A person like me, uh, supposed to do such a thing or not, uh, must think like that. That is called, we take oneself as the guide 
oneself as the chief. Uh, so we must think when we want to do something, is it good for me to do? A person like me supposed to do such a thing or not? Uh, uh, so when we think of ourselves, we all have our own personality. Uh, we have learned seed certain things, we have developed a kind of personality. Based on our personality, we must think. Before we do anything, we must think of ourselves. Is it good for me to do? Huh? Uh, if I do, what will be the outcome? Uh, what will happen to me? Like that, we have to think when we want to do something. That's called Attadipateya. So, when, Bud when the Buddha talked about general freedom, he did not say you have freedom to do anything. You must follow certain principles. Based on that, you should do it. First principle is, must think of ourselves. Uh, then, the second principle taught by the Buddha is Dhamma Adipatheya. Uh, importance of the Dhamma. Must think of the Dhamma when we want to do. It doesn't mean teachings of the Buddha or if a person is belong to Christianity or Islam or something. Uh, he must think based on those teachings. That is also can come under this, but mainly in this world there are accepted good practices, uh, accepted good practices. When we live in a society, we have accepted uh, practice. Uh, what are the accepted practices? There are some simple morals. Uh, uh, we know stealing is wrong, cheating people is wrong. Uh, then uh, we know if somebody do stealing, cheating or some wrong things, what will be the uh, outcome, uh, how the society can think of ourselves and certain people who ha have got some respect from the society, some appreciation from the society don't do certain kind of things. Uh, they abstain from doing certain things looking at some people who are leading an exemplary life. <clears throat> so, uh, the world, we must put the world as our uh, guidance. If anything is accepted in the world as a wrong practice and people blame for that, we should avoid it. There are blamish actions, uh, actions which can criticize by the world. So when we want to do something, we must see our actions by word or by uh, physically um, can get the blame, can get the criticism. Uh, are they um, against? acceptance of the uh, society. So, we must give some value, importance to the uh, society where we live. Uh, so that is called Lokadipateya. We should not do things uh, which is bad for people who live with us, which can be criticized by people of the society, criticized by 
people who are respected by the society by thinking of the world thinking of the society we must abstain from doing certain things if anything is condemned by the world condemned by the society we must uh, stay away from that kind of things so if anything uh, blame us when we do something our own self blame us we should not do when we do something if accepted uh, moral people good people criticize or condemn our actions we should abstain from that also uh, then the third um, aspect third principle which we have to follow is when we do things third principle we have to follow is uh, dhamma adipatiya dhamma we must think of the dhamma good dhamma good principles which we have learned huh? if it is for a buddhist what he has to um, pay attention when he is doing something uh, when he is in act, in action uh, for a buddhist there are five principles he or she has to think of five principles i am a buddhist uh, i have learned five principles as a part of teachings of the buddha if not he or she has to think i am a buddhist uh, in buddhism or buddha dhamma i have learned uh, uh, moral principles or ethical principles uh, i am supposed to practice ethical conduct uh, i am supposed to practice uh, uh, mental discipline so when i want to do something i must think about of these things if they are against those principles which i have learned i must abstain from them that is called dhamma dipateya we must put dhamma as our uh, leader dhamma as our guidance and by putting dhamma as our guidance when we want to do something we must look at the dhamma principles uh related to our dhamma so when we can get clearance from these three aspects we are totally free to do uh what we like but if it is against our own uh consents we should not do if it is against uh moral society we should not do if it is against the dhamma which we practice which we learn and practice we should not do but if we can get the clearance from these three we can do when we want to do something huh so these three aspects are the guidance for our behavior our actions uh even for our thinking Uh, so when we look at uh things in that way we can see although buddhism has given ultimate freedom that means freedom from attachment to self and overcome all the defilements buddhism does not uh ask you to do whatever you like in your usual life when we lead the life in the society we must pay attention towards the society we must pay attention towards our own self if anything blame by doing when we do something or when we think of doing something guilty feelings come from our own heart we should not do and uh, when we pay attention towards the dhamma 
it is if it is not agreeable with the principles of the dhamma which we have learned we should avoid uh, if we can get clearance from these three then we can go ahead to do what we want uh, so uh, buddhism gives freedom to us within a limit that means within some guidance with the guidance of those three principles we are free to do things so that's all i want to talk uh, i would like to stop here huh? thank you all.